Mansi, you can open the forum now. And so you can start my video as well. Yes, I'm doing that. And open the forum for the people. Yeah, yeah. I have already opened the okay, uh, okay. forum. I'm start allowing you to start your video right now. Okay.
when she shall be start yes sir there are 30 participants right now so you can start okay, okay. so good evening to all of you this this is a 60th session on the challenging case series as usual i will start with my first case um start sharing my screen Okay, I hope my uh, slides are seen, no? Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll go with the first case. So this is the story of a 45-year-old man who presented the step enabled you to lift, lift heavy objects above his head two months back, followed by inability to turn the key with the right hand. That is, he still difficult in lifting the head, heavy object above the head with his right hand. This is two months back followed by inability to turn the key with his right hand. There was no pain or any sensory complaint. <clears throat> the weakness is almost static since then. There is no neck pain, no other complaints. So this is the video of the patient. I think you, you please see the video very carefully. But his shoulder a little bit. Abduction was weak, actually. Support it, okay? Support it. Okay. Support it okay. More weak on the right side. Okay. In a self fact, compared only to the right. Vices was good power, but mild weakness. Okay. Maybe by that, a mild weakness. But more power on the left side. Okay. Vices work is also okay. Okay. Vices was normal. Okay. Vices was normal. Best exercises were normal. The intrusion was weak. MDA was weak. Initially appeared weak. Let's see what's happened subsequently. We find the FDA is definitely weak. Look at the little finger, it was good power. The numericals were weak. Look at the Tina muscle. The Tina is also good power. See, the is also good power. That's also good power. Performance is good. What is Positive bilateral yeah, checking. See the right side. See, very good power. That is also is good power. But if you it's weak on the left side. That is definitely weak. Come to the reflexes. Reflexes are just electrical in the upper limb. Look at the scapula muscles. We can also let the scapula was out. The part is also weak bilaterally. Okay, externally rotate. It is also weak on the right side as both sides. How with the rhomboids of good power? In the serratus of good power. Good power of So, summing up the findings, he had weakness of both trapezius, deltoid, supra, and infraspinate, bilaterally present more on the right side. However, there was no weakness serratus rhomboids. Biceps mild weakness on the right side, very mild weakness on the left side. Triceps is however normal. Forearm muscles were normal. There is weakness of introsia and adductive policies bilaterally more on the right side. However, thenar and hypothenar muscles were normal. Theta decreased biceps and supinator, other repressed were normal. Sensory examination normal. And so that is the finding. 
So, where is the site of lesion? What is likely possible? If you want any clarification regarding the muscle weakness, I can show the video once again. Yes, anyone would like to make a comment? Hello, anyone? Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me, please, please. The symptoms are uh, bilateral, sir. Some asymmetry is there. Uh, yeah, he complained of only when the weakness is right upper limb, probably is right handed. But an examination, your yeah. findings are bilateral, which is more weak on the right side. Right side, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and static from the last two months? Uh, uh, for two months. He yes, noticed sir. it two months back and remained like that. Yes, sir. Sir, a froment sign is also positive, sir. Adductor is also positive. positive, yeah. Adductor is also weak by that. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, basically, he has a weakness in the more on the proximal muscles yeah. and mild weakness in the distal muscles. Yes, predominantly in the deltoid, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and yeah. external rotators. Correct, correct. Uh, and distally, just one FDI is weak and just a uh, prominent sign is there. Yeah, FDI is weak, definitely, and adductor uh, is weak. Probably the other interest is also weak. But yes. hypothenar and thenar muscles were normal. Normal, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, first I will think of some uh, myopathic disorder, sir. Because since it is a bilateral onset, mm. um, and reflexes are also not uh, hyper there, sir. Bilateral. No, no, no hyper yeah. It was tricep sugar just decreased, but triceps are normal. No. Okay, sir. Lowerly okay. muscles are all normal. Okay, sir. Okay. I think first of a myopathic disorder, sir. Yeah, right. Very good. Yeah. Now, why do you think it's a myopathic disorder in this case? Sir, uh, since the symptoms are bilateral, sir. But you can have other conditions like bilateral, uh, bilateral plexopathy can be there, can be an disease, can be there. Yes, sir. Yeah, the second possibility is antihonsal disorder, I think, because of uh, uh, muscles involved are very much a patchy involvement, sir. Not particularly in any root. Yeah, that's very perfectly right. It's not fitting with the road distribution, nor a nerve distribution. That's a two important point. What is it is exactly correct. So we have to think either a muscle disease or anti muscle disease. Okay. Yes. Right. So anyone else want like to make a comment? Which muscle disease we have in mind? I thought of a facial scapular hemal dystrophy, sir. Okay, uh, very good. But there is no scapular ringing. Uh, no no facial weakness is also there, sir. Those are odd points. Okay, right. So let us see this patient. So what, what do you want me to do with this patient? Sir, beaver sign is there, sir. Beaver sign. No, no beaver sign. No, no beaver sir. sign. No, the only muscles are all normal. Sensory examination is normal, sir. Normal, normal. Okay, sir. Sir. Uh, sir. Nerve conduction, yes. Okay, we'll do the nerve conduction. They were normal in both upper and lower limbs. So, what do you want me to do now? Needle, sir. Okay, needle. So, EMG the deltoid in Intrushi. There was occasional fibrillations and positive sharp words and frustrations press. MEP says was normal, but however, there was no large MEP. The interference was normal. Sir, this occasional fibrillation and posterior sharp waves, that can be normal, sir? No, uh, they're not normal. That indicates denervation pain. It indicates uh, there is some uh, muscles are denervated by some form. Okay, sir. Okay. Anything else you want now? Sir, EMG in the lower limb, sir. EMG was that is normal. CPK was normal, sir. CPK was normal. I will show the CPK value. Okay. So, uh, uh, so what do you think now? Antihonsal disease. Antihonsal disease. Okay. Well, let us see. What is the striking feature in this patient? To say with hypertrophy, hypertrophy, sir. There is no hypertrophy in here. Uh, triceps and the forearm muscles are small. Uh, 
No, no, normal. There's only normal muscle, not hypertrophy. If you want to see the that one. Uh, dentod is uh, more atrophied than the other muscles. Uh, uh, yeah, seems to be a little more atrophied than the other. Also, they are very much. Dentod appears to be quite good. Biceps and triceps are good now. Okay, so what is the striking thing is that the selective affection and bilateral affection. See, it's called MDA and adductors are affected with sparing of the hypothenar and tena. That means the distribution muscle is not in the nerve distribution nor in the root distribution. And it is bilateral. So the logically, as the, the, the discussion has already told, most likely you have to keep the possibility of muscle disease, less, less likely to be anti defensive disease, but that possibility can be removed. So what else you want to do now? Confirm your diagnosis. Okay, so examine. Yeah. Now, I'll show you some other facts. No? See, look at this, the way I, I made him abduct the hand. The trunk goes backward. Did you see the trunk goes backward, indicating bilateral trapezius? See, 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 see the clavicular head. It is good power. See the good power. See the clavicular head. Very good power. Clavicular head on the petri is me. On the same time, the channel head is not a they can easily uh, uh, overcome each other. And asymmetrically, this is also more uh, based on this. And, and yes, but. Such kind of selective in the muscle. Reverse for negative, and for the other side. So, because of this, the first possible day, thought was, as uh, this was said, patient's capital. Yeah. 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 Did you notice this finding? It one goes backward while affecting yeah. the last explanation. See the clavicular head. So the tongue goes backward in, on abduction of the shoulders. Selective affection channel head of pectoralis is pairing with the clavicular head. So is it neurologic amyotrophy? Are the trunk going head. backward and arthanda, sir? What does that mean? No, I, I, I'll come to that explain in detail later on. I'll do three similar cases later on. Then it'll be more, I mean, it'll be better, better understand that way. I'll come to that. Patient had already received five injections of IV and been locked in hospital. You think there's some kind of brachial neuritis because of their shoulder needle came first. So, FSHD. So, what do you want you to do? So, muscle biopsy was sent. The historical features show myopathic features with the neurogenic changes, sparse inflammation. Historic features are compatible with FSHD, but not confirmed. So this kind of FSHD can have varied manifestations. Yesterday, I don't know, in the last Saturday and Sunday, we had a discussion of the CAN meeting about the types. Of, one of the cases was mimicking FSHD. You'll come to that case later on. So this, this presentation I will show one by one by one. So this is one case. I'll show it another case. A 43-year-old man is to have progressive weakness of left foot in the form of episodic inversion of the foot while walking as well as loosening of the chapels from the left foot. The only con combined confident was the left, left, left foot alone. This has been there for two years. No sensory complaint, no root pain. This is the video. The pain. Unfortunately, the video was not a good video. Taken mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. yeah, it okay. it the pretzels were normal. The pretzels were normal. The no on the right side. Mm -hmm. On the left side, it is weak. Each is also weak. That pressure was good. Come to the reflexes. Reflexes were normal. 
I mean, so it's sluggish bilaterally, both in here and here. He was combining your sensory loss, but the real object is sensory loss. Yeah, skin tells right. There is weakness of left loose flexion and inversion. Detail lower lip, both knee checks absent. Angle, left angle is present, right is absent. Sensations, this is query, we are not very sure. So, what do you think likely to be? What likely can't be on nerve pulse, you know? Because of the inversion and the dose production is weak on the left side. So NCS was done. There was normal CMAP and normal SNAP. So what will you consider now? Myopathy. What consider is only a foot drop on one side. Is it not taught myopathy for saying as a foot drop on one door? But we are to examine the upper limbs also, sir. Upper limbs are no, I'll come to the upper limb later. Just, just. See, in fact, I examined only because he came with the left foot drop, I examined only the lower limb. I did not bother to undress and see the upper part. Now, let us see. So, since it was normal and sensations were normal, so I examined the knee jerks were up, sir. Knee jerks both both are different. But the my cortisol's power was no. Maybe we not physiologically decrease or not, we don't. So, the abduction was good power. But hip action was weak bilaterally. They could easily overcome the hip action. And they could easily overcome the hip action. The are also weak. They checked once. It's not a rapid look. So initially, I thought contralateral palsy, since it's not snap was normal, uh, CMAP was normal. Then I started to examine to find out whether it could be a retropathy I'm dealing with. Look for hip abduction that was normal, but hip abduction was weak by that. Now I started examining. Then they uh, start examining fully well. So examining. Both hip flexors are weak, sir. Both hip are weak. Both, both hip extensors were weak, hip flexors were normal. Okay. So that is the first clue to suspect a myopathy in this patient. Now let us see, he has got a positive sign. We have to make it very I'll show you once again. With the viewer sign is coming back, but you can make it out because they're all taken by he did not focus it going up and coming back. Now I understood him. See, this is the body of the patient. Now you can make a diagnosis, no? Typical Pope appearance of facial, facial scap like human dystrophy. So it's got a bulky delta. This is a classical appearance. My patient had atrophied biceps. The other previous patient had good biceps and triceps. I almost to the extent of hypertrophy. But it is atrophy here, both biceps. This is a classical appearance of Pope appearance. The forearm muscles are bulky. And yes, could the two axillary folds here? That is another feature telling the scapula has come forward. <laughs> no, you know, classical. <laughs> also called body heel sign and all things. But he presented a big foot drop at that point. And look at this trunk. Uh, for extending it, the trunk goes backwards. 
आए वचन पके निकाल ना कि के ट्रेंडिंग दैट ट्रेंड गोस बैक टू इट पिंग अतरे वेल टू डू अरे अंगोट नो इंडिया नो आ वचन पका ना कि के मैक्स में अतरे उल्लू हां अरे चलिए चलिए आगे पका ना कि के मैक्सिमम इंगे अतरे उल्लू फर्स्ट पेज नॉट सो हैड दिस पर्टिकुलर पेन Yeah, I will not waste your time. Is that all of the features are typical of part of FSHB? Price yeah. of prices are weak for yeah. a person. Okay. 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 Now, hypertrophic deltoid and pora muscles, poppy appearance, scapular hump and axillary fold. That is a classic list of FSHB. The scapular hump here. And actually, it falls. Yeah. Hey, you know, poka no kiki. Tend to get it. This is capital hump. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Indicating weakness of the low fibers of the epiphysis. No. Now coming the uh, Joyce question. Why should his trunk goes backward and elevation the arm? I'll come to that later on again. But go to the third case. This twenty-year-old girl noticed one day, about three months back, inability to lift a heavy object onto a high shelf. Mother noticed extra bone above her right shoulder. That is the complaint by the mother came. He had another extra bone on the right shoulder has appeared. No other complaint. This is the late girl. You can see the extra bone here. Hmm. Hmm. शोन Please, someone can volunteer, please. Sir, right side is deltoid and trapezius, sir. Deltoid is normal. Trapezius is. Ah, good. Right side trapezius is weak. Any other muscle which is weak? Serratus anterior and trapezius. Weak on the right side. Okay. On the right side. Okay. Any any other opinion? You can just tell water. Let it be wrong. So what? Any other people are here? Please, volunteer, please. Delta is a delta. Delta is normal. I did not show the delta. That is normal. What is happening? The trapezial sausage. Let us see. Let us see what is happening. Let us see. On the right side, elevating. The scapula has gone up. What is happening on the left side? Is it okay? The left side is out. See, see where is the scapula? It has gone out, and there is a hollowing here. Okay, so this scapula has gone up. This scapula has gone outward. So what does it mean? That means here the trapezius is weak, producing the inferior fibers are weak, so the scapula has gone up. If the middle and inferior fibers are weak, so the scapula is moved out. So both trapezius are weak, but the fiber which is affected is different. Okay, this scapula has not moved out. In trapezius, we expect scapula should go out. Here it has not gone out because the middle fibers and inferior fibers are okay. The middle fibers are okay. 
The inferior fibers are weak, that is the scapular's mode up. The upper fibers are pulling it up. Here what is happening is the middle fibers are weak, so the scapula is moved out to it. So scapula hum and weakness the lower fibers of the trapezes. And on the left shoulder, it is moved laterally and anteriorly. Sir, one doubt, sir. Please. Sir, in serratus anterior also, the scapula will go medially, sir. Yeah, you are right. Scapula will go medially. Here it should not go medially, correct? What is it? It's correct. So, see, this has gone clean but medially, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, that this is one of the appearances you see in serratus. So, you may think that a serratus is weak on the right side as well, correct? Yes, sir. But it is not, I'll tell you the reason later. This much you can, I'll, 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 I'll uh, come to each point later on. I've got some, uh, one, two, three more videos are there. So this is, now let's see, weakness of middle fiber trapeze on the left side. Is there a weakness of right side of the side? That is what your, your question was. Yes, you think it is. Now let us see the next part of my video. This is how you should examine side of the side. Do not just look at the winging. So I may put the serratus into action. The winging is disappeared. The winging has appeared now. When on leaving the pressure, wing is appeared on putting the pressure. So that tells you that there is no winging. Then that's a pseudo winging. I'll tell you what is a pseudo winging later on. So there is no serratus anterior weakness. It is because the so called pseudo winging is due to the loss of fixed traction that the thesis. I'll come to that again later. So what else will you do? Let's see the next part of the video. Just like the previous patient, I selectively look for the spectralis. That is we. So it's another case of MPSHD. She had no beaver sign. CPK was 165. EMG showed. Some muscles are showing some neurogenic pattern. So both neurogenic and myopathy. Again, another case. Now, let us explain certain signs which can get confused with examination of these patients. Why is that trunk is going back on elevation of the shoulder? This is called the active elevation lag sign. I'll explain that later. What is causing the pseudo winging or the uh, winging in this girl with normal serratus and apparently serratus weakness? That's called the scapular blink sign or the scapular dyskinesis. I will explain each one. Now let us, before that, let us briefly talk about something about that. 
I act so that trapezius. The trapezius dysfunction causes both static and dynamic shoulder muscles. <laughs> it is divided into three distinct heads, upper, middle, and lower. The upper fibers descend from the base of the skull and cervical spine to insert the posterior third of the clavicle and acromion, creating a long suspension of the lever, suspension lever arm, which statically prevents the shoulder girdle depression. It's called the shoulder girdle. This is the upper fibers. But remember that the upper fibers, trapeze, upper, trapeze, weakness of the upper fibers alone will not cause the depression because there is another muscle called the levator, uh, there is elevator scapula, which also keeps the scapula up. On the other hand, the middle and lower fibers extend from the thoracic spine here and insert on the scapula spine, the base and the triangular upper neurosis. These fibers statically and dynamically tether the scapula to the thoracic spine, limiting excessive motivation. See, one of the peculiarities of the upper arm, shoulder, I mean, proximal muscles is that it is the proximal bone in which it acts. That's a scapula. It's a mobile structure. It's not a fixed structure. So what happened mean? The scapula has to be fixed to the trunk by the strong muscles like the pieces and the serratus. The muscles are weak. There is, there is no fixed interaction. There is no other bone to fixate onto the scapula, onto the chest wall. So it's all depending upon these strong, strong muscles to fixate the scapula. When the fixatory scapula, fixation of the scapula is faulty, the muscles which act from the scapula, it will not scale there. It will flame. It will move away from the trunk. I'll explain a little more later, little detail. So the upper, that is actually the trapezius. The upper trapezius elevates, the middle fibers retracts, the lower trapezius depresses. The middle and lower trapezius appear to play a major role in stabilizing the scapular medial border during resisted humeral external rotation. In unison, the primary function of the trapezius is to upwardly rotate the scapula during scapular elevation, forming a force coupled with the serratus anterior. That is the abduction beyond the 90 degrees carried out by the rotation of the scapula. Now, this is the base of the scapula when uh, hyper the trunk. See, when you when you hyper, hyper flex or hyper extend the I mean hyper abduct the shoulder, the chromium has to go move upward. See, if you forward flex the arm beyond the 90 degrees, it's done not done by your shoulder joint, it is done by your scapula going by um, uh, rotation of the scapula. The scapula chromium rotates up, then only you can elevate the hand beyond your 90 degrees. The hyperspex arm is maintained by the intact trapeze. This is the trapezius function. It pulls the trapeze backward. And this cannot be maintained by the serratus anterior alone, as you can see shown here. The middle and lower parts of the pieces must rotate the scapula, causing elevation of the This is responsible for the terminal segment of the forward elevation of the shoulder, which cannot occur if the acromion does not elevate. In this situation, any further attempt at forward elevation produces a compensatory spinal hyperextension to compensate for the lack of acromion elevation and corresponding shoulder elevation. So that is why the trunk goes back to it. Because arm is stopping, the further elevation or, or it can be done only be extended in the trunk back. And this is this this is done by this active elevation lag sign. Now there is a triangle. I'll show the video. Video of this particular sign. The active elevation lag sign is used to detect trapezius muscle distance. To perform this test, ask the patient to forward flex her arm and the shoulder on the undefected side, normal side. Next, ask the, ask the patient to forward flex, uh, forward flex her arm on the shoulder on the affected side. If the both muscles are equal, there is no difference, there is no lag, and the test is normal. If there is an observable lag between the affected side and the unaffected side, the test is possible. Alternatively, if the patient hyperextends his back, her back, to compensate for the lag, the test is positive. 
So only this is the video from the YouTube at the download. Patients detect trapezius muscle dysfunction or spinal accessory nerve palsy. To perform this test, ask the patient to forward flex her arm at the shoulder on the unaffected side. Next, ask her to forward flex her arm at the shoulder on the affected side. If there is no difference or no lag, the test is normal. If there is an observable lag between the affected and the unaffected arms, the test is positive. Alternatively, if the patient hyperextends her back to compensate for the lag, the test is positive. That is the normal side. Okay. The active elevation lag sign is used to detect trapezius muscle dysfunction or spinal accessory nerve palsy. To perform this test, ask the patient to forward flex her arm at the shoulder on the unaffected side. Next, ask her to forward flex her arm at the shoulder on the affected side. If there is no huh? difference or no lag, the test is normal. If there is an observable lag between that's the it? affected and the unaffected arms, the awesome. test is positive. Alternatively, if the patient yeah, yeah. extends her back and to she comments the, the test is positive. Back. Okay. No, no, no. We are warning the takeover the case for you. But there is a similar sign called a triangle sign. I will not go into that. It says the same thing. As the patient lie prone, ask him to elevate. On the affected side, the arm will not elevate and form a triangle like this. The triangle sign. This is another sign. This is a, this is a negative triangle sign. This is a positive. It's again showing a uh, weakness of the trapezius. Now, let me, you had something similar. When you, uh, this, the second patient, there appeared something like a pseudo weakness of the serratus sign. It's not a weakness of the sign. It's called a scapular dyskinesis or scapular fling sign. It refers to observable alteration in the scapular position or motion during coupled scapular movements. For example, here on this left side, it's an externally rotated left arm. Okay. But it accelerated arm appeared weak. But what actually was happening was there was no weakness external rotation. This muscle is good power, intraspinal. But what's happening is the scapula cannot be approximated to the shoulder because it's a, it's a, okay, this appears something like a serratus weak because they see even inferior angle is also weak. Because the scapula blinks backward because it is not fixated onto the or by the trapezius because that is weak. So apparently what will happen? The external rotation is not taking place because the scapula has moved outward. It is not itself. It's called the scapula fling sign. Okay. So can you tell that once more, sir? No, because for any movement to occur in the, the muscles acting on the scapula, the external rotators or supraspinators or other extensions of the shoulder, the scapula has to be fixed onto the chest wall. The muscles which sit on the shoulder is the uh, trapezius and the pedis, which uh, uh, plasters the scapula so it, become, it, it, is, it, it remains stable. Then only other muscle acts. So in this patient, actually this patient had trapezius weakness. But the patient is asked to do the external rotation. Asked to do the external rotation, there is no external rotation, appear weak. But actually what is happening is that the scapula has moved out from the position because the pieces weakens. This is called the scapula flip sign or fling sign. The serratus angle is also supposed to keep the scapula on the thorax, no? But the only thing is that the serratus is the keeping the scapula on the back. They don't say it's a big picture. It's a very simple 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 picture. Okay. Am I audible now? You are aware you there's some hissing noise coming. At times you are clear, at other times it's not clear. Sir. Okay. I'll exit and then until once again. You push it in. So what I have been telling you that 
Yeah. We are not audible. Um, tell me one second so that the accident join, uh, rejoin one second. Am, is your okay. audio audible now? Now yes, it's better. Uh, actually, uh, I would request the attendees uh, and other panelists to mute when sir is speaking because the noise was coming from some other pan, uh, faculties. This background. Okay. So, what was talking about the two signs? One is the active elevation latch sign. That means when you, when the trapezius is, the, uh, one of the action of trapezius is that it put its subduction beyond 90 degrees and flexion of the step, flexion of the shoulder beyond 90 degrees. Because to, to make the 90 degrees, uh, uh, to, uh, to produce this moment above 90 degrees, the scapula has to move upward, rotate upward. The scapula acromion has to go upward. Okay, that is done by the trapezius. The trapezius is weak. You cannot have a forward flexion beyond 90 degrees or abduction beyond 90 degrees because the scapula does not rotate upward. So in, in the case of this active uh, elevation lag said what is happening is that patient is asked to elevate down. Normally, this elevation means it can go upward. Normally, no problem. The scapula moves upward. When the, status, when the trapeze is weak on one side, this scapula remains going, I mean, the arm abduct up, uh, make a forward function only up to this degree. Beyond that, it cannot because the trapeze is weak. So what happened? The patient tried to extend the trunk so that to make the hand go up. So that's what we look for. So look for the extension of the trunk. That is called the, that is why in both our patients, when the patient asked to elevate or abduct the arm, the trunk goes backward because in an attempt to make it up, the trunk goes backward. So the, that is one sign. The other sign is scapular flip sign in which you can apparent weakness of the external rotators or, or infraspinators or supraspinators or absences in a person who has got a weakness of the trapezius or, 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 or sciatic sign, mainly trapezius. This is because scapula is one um, and bone where it has no other attachment to the trunk except with the muscles only. The only attachment is the clavicle, which is a very feeble attachment. So all other bones has got attachment to the trunk. But here it is attached by the, for example, hip, hip you take. It is attached to the pelvis. If you take here in the param muscle, param bone, attached to the other humerus. But for scapula, there is no proximal bone it is attached. They are attached only by the muscle. So when the muscle is weak, which holds the scapula onto the trunk, when, when that particular fixator is weak, it will fling backward. When, for example, the external rotator is made to action, made to put into action. That is why what is seen in this picture here. When the patient has got weakness of the trapezius, but however, when this patient asked to do the external rotation, the external rotation appeared weak. But the external rotator is just normal power. Look at the good power of the external rotator, bulk. So what had happened means the scapula has flinged backward, flipped backward. So you can apparent weakness of the external rotator. So these things you have to keep in mind when you examine your uh, patients. So always when you check the serrator side again, put your hand from behind and press. Otherwise, you get something like a pseudo winging may appear. Okay, I will show another case. This man noticed foot drop on the left side, just like my previous patient. No sensory complaint, incisors normal. This is how he came to the OP. He had no other complaint. On the other car. On the But when you examine it further again, and doesn't see he has got a classical appearance of that FSHD. So the point I was trying to say is that FSHD can present as acute foot drop. There are atypical phenotypic presentations like facial sparing FSHD. FSHD can present with POS syndrome, progressive extraplasia syndrome, lymphoid muscular dystrophy syndromes, distal myopathy like presentation. Asymmetrical brachial weakness, just like our first patient, which we had. So, I think they will skip all these things. Uh, 
numerous signs have been described, like the pucker, serpent, growling sign, terpenous appearance. This is one important sign the, to the two folds which is seen in the axilla. Decay the scapulas move forward and the biceps are scapula and the axillary folds. Okay, now you can unmute and then ask questions. The scapula hump is due to weakness of the inferior inferior and middle fibers. Sir. Very good, very good. Inferior fibers that the pieces. That is the scapula moves upward. So this indicates that there is a selective involvement of the muscles in FSH, in muscle disease. As you know, most of the muscular dystrophies, the affection is selective. Only even in one muscle, only one part may be affected. That is why in muscle disease, you can the upper part of the deltoid may be hypertrophied, the lower part of the deltoid is atrophied. That is a main action of uh, serratus anterior is to keep the scapula attached to the thoracic wall, no? Correct. So, which is more strong, trapezius or the serratus anterior? Trapezius is more strong. The main action of the thoracus is to protrash of the scapula. So, in the presence of trapezius, what happens? The scapula not only really elevates, it is pushed forward. That is why the two folds appear in front. These are subtle signs, but useful signs. When you look at the front, you know, even unusually two poles appear, that means it just moved forward. So the triceratus is overacting. And serratus anterior weakness, it is the inferior angle of the scapula which moves. Yeah, inferior angle will wing and go medially. Because the protraction is affected, the, the, the intact trapezius will pull the scapula medially. That Hello. Less Robert. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, sir, if uh, this FSHD present as a girdle weakness, how are we going to differentiate? From? From which you uh, differentiate from? From like a normal myopathy or. Yeah. Uh, no, this is a myopathy only, it's a muscular dystrophy. FSHD. The problem comes when there is a symmetrical onset confined only to one upper limb. One may erroneously diagnose brachial plexopathy. For example, the first patient who diagnoses brachial plexopathy and has given steroid because he combined only a right upper limb. Unless you meticulously examine the contralateral limb, upper limb, look for specific involvement or the uh, specific pattern of involvement, we will miss the pattern. That is a peculiar FSH. And one of the useful signs is the Weaver's sign. When you find that there is very almost, I mean, there are other conditions like acid maltase and all, but most of the time it is uh, in a myopathic disorder, it is FSH. Okay, sir. Sir, this fibrillation positive chapters, how common is in FSHD? That is very, very common because FSHD as well as this uh, rimmed vacuolar myopathy, so all fibrillation cell positive is very, very, very common. Because yesterday, when you mean uh, Saturday, we had a case now where the yeah. of the physiology of can meeting. Because then, the, then maybe, uh, I mean, the, my muscle fibers get split. So you get one of the part of the muscle become appears denerved. So it produces fibrillation synthesis. That is one of the explanations. You still don't find fasciculations are not really how do we differentiate winging uh, because of trapezius and rhomboids weakness? Yeah, in, in uh, trapezius and this thing is simple because trapezius winging, the scapula move outward. In rhomboid swinging, sorry, when trapezius winging, the scapula move outward, so also in rhomboid swinging. But in the rhomboid swinging, it is the inferior angle which will wing. Whereas in the case of trapezius swinging, the upper angle will be. Because the trapezius is inserted into the spine of the scapula. I got another picture which I didn't know. I might download it because. Uh, yes. like you said earlier, if the inferior fibers are affected, yes. the yes. lower angle can be, no? Yes. Uh, lower angle, no. 
the, even the inferior fibers are affected. It is attached to the spine of the scapula. It is the upper part of the scapula which will be. Okay. In the case of trapezius. We saw that pseudo winging, no? Where, uh, yeah, in pseudo winging, that, in pseudo winging, that can occur. Pseudo winging, because it's only, the only thing is the fixator is gone. It's not fixed on the scapula. The whole scapula will come backward. Look at trapezius. Love. In that case with pseudo winging, the lower part was uh, jutting outward, no? no it, it can be the whole middle border or lower part which can jut, jut it out, jut out. For example, the other patient which has shown, it appeared like something like a serratus winging. Yeah, I'll show the picture once again. Yeah, this one, this picture. It appears on the whole middle border is winging and the inferior angle is also winging. It's actually weakness, the winging is actually due to the serratus and trapezius in the moment. From, how, from yeah. here, how we find out that this is trapezius and not serratus? Yeah. Because see, this, it has moved outward. The scapula has moved outward. That means the serratus is pulling it forward. If it had been due to a weakness of the serratus anterior winging, the scapula will move medially. Because the function of the serratus, the serratus is coming from chamber anterior. This is a, a chest wall. It is attached to the inferior angle and push the scapula forward. So when serratus is weak, the scapula go medially. Especially inferior angle. Inferior angle will go medially. Because the main insertion is in the inferior angle of the scapula. So in the case of rhomboids also, what happened mean? The, 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 the rhomboids the fibers are attached in this fashion. So the inferior will angle will weak and it will move outward. In serratus, the inferior angle will wing and move medially. In rhomboids, the inferior angle will wing and move laterally. That's clear, sir. Okay. Yes. Sir, but trapezius, there is inferior fibers also, no? Yeah. But what so all the fibers are attached to the spine here? This is, spine means the, this is the spine, where the fibers are all inside of the spine. So that part is the one which is going to wing in the case of serratus anterior. Then this is the spine. You see the insertion is all the spine. Okay. That is clear. Okay. So I'll go to another case. Uh, sir, just one question, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, while doing a EMJ paraspinal muscle, you yeah. see only yeah. the insertional act, this means only uh, resting potentials, or you also analyze MUP and also uh, uh, increment that uh, recruitment, also, sir? No, the only, the only definite thing which can come in is a spontaneous activity that we can clearly see. You can also find out the size of the MUP, but most of the name is difficult. I know that some interference by will be appeared decreased even in normal individuals because we are not sure which muscles are put into action. Whether a lot of muscles are much in much in between the knee release. So it appears to be contract, but maybe not. So the thing what paraspinous spontaneous activity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, now let's go to the next case. This is story of a 60-year-old man. It's a chronic alcoholic who developed, developed recurrent vomiting two for two days and is admitted in the local hospital. The serum sodium was 106 at that time, and he was treated in the hospital. Two or three days later, the patient went into altered sensory. The patient suspected to have central point in manualysis, and the MRI was taken after one week of developing altered sensory. That is on week roughly about 10 days after the heat test or, or the, the, where the hydroepinephrine was detected. So this is the MRI taken after one week after the heat test. You find this the flyer sequence, the thing in the pons. Not the flyer, this is a diffusion, sorry. So 
So this is the equation. The, I think the first one was the prior. So the first one was the prior. This is the prior sequence. This is the division. I made a mistake. This is the division. So what do you think the patient might be having? MRI was normal. But MRI is normal. Can be normal. Then how to make a diagnosis? Difficult, no? Okay. So patient has put on a vendetti support along with other supportive treatment. CS was done, which is normal, and patient has suspected encephalitis and put in a cycle. So a CT scan was done after five days because of the financial constraint. The CT scan this is a CT scan. And patient could be weaned up from the ventilator but continued to remain in a comfortable state. Examination there is bilateral rigidity of both upper and lower limb. Pandas were up going. Patient and the patient had this interesting finding on oculocephalic testing. That I will show the interesting finding. Now look very carefully. With this ometos, I'm doing the oculocephalic testing. Okay, very good. Okay. Oh, no, no. On turning the head left side, I go to the same side. The turning. On left side, I go to the left side. This one moved on to the right. Turning right side, I go slowly to the right. Again, like a, going in like an oil, it is going towards the left side. Now, turning to the right side, goes to the right side slowly and remain there for some time. Making quick movements also, it may produce the same thing. Okay, I'll show you one more video. So, this from the behind, I have taken to show this picture. Turn in the turning to the left side, I go to the left side. Remain there for some time and slowly come back to the mid -line. Turn in the right side, goes to that side. Make a quick movement again, same thing is happening. Is it not funny? We expect eyeball movement to the contralateral side of head movement. It is moving on the same side. The eye movements are not quick, slow. So what do you call this particular eye sign? Anyone? Alternating. Yeah. Alternating gay deviation. But it is not there at rest. Only I am moving the head, it goes to that direction. In alternating gaze deviation, eyes goes to one direction, remain for some time, then turn to go to the other side, remain for some time. That's alternating uh, conjugate. Voluntary circuits. Uh, but there's vicious comatose. There's no voluntary. It's not moving voluntarily. And look at the eyeball movement. It's not a circadian movement. The eye moves very slowly. It moves. It goes slowly. I'll show you one second. It moves very slowly, but a quick move. Geotropic something, eh? geotropic. Uh... Good. It's called geotropic alternate gaze deviation. So when geotropic means which direction is the lower one? When the head is on you know, the lower side, I goes to that side. Suppose I turn the head to the left side, I goes to that side. In fact, this is described in CJD. So, so, so what a repeat MRI was taken. This is a repeat MRI. If it's restricting the pons in the basal ganglia as well as in the cortical ribbon, the cortical surface. Okay, so I think I put some more video. So what is the difference than uh, absent dose phenomenon? Absent dolls, 
don't don't say phenomena i did not get got the other thing instead of dots phenomena got the this kind of is the well can we say that the dots phenomena is absent in this case no it is absent in this case because it is replaced by this case thing but the significance is almost same it indicates that the gaze and days are in that it occurs lesions in the lesions in the tectum of the brain this kind of alternate gaze deviation but the gaze and days should be so this is the diffusion of the image once again this is the pons this is the vermis of the cerebellum that is getting affected here thalamus basal ganglia cortical regions the cause of called cortical ribbon you can see the hypointensity in the pons so what is the diagnosis again mylar lysis okay you are perfectly right but why should it occur later mri thing is usually lacks the yeah that's the thing it can lag as long as 6 weeks No, I don't know whether you listened to the CAN meeting last case. Yeah. Uh, you were there when you listened to the CAN meeting. Yes, sir. Yeah, with the example yes, of the, the boy. He had MRI findings that happened much later. Yes, sir. And like, hey, look at this particular one. The whole pod's involvement like this, uniformly affected. That is another phenomenon which you've seen in this kind of a metabolic uh, scene with the CPM. See this one? See people for like renal failure and all you can this kind of a peculiar thing. So this is what is called the geotropic ocular deviation with skew and absence of saccade in Jacob Purcell disease. But there is no case report in CPM, but this is like to be a CPM. So since I was not sure, yeah, tell me. Yeah. So the initial MRI, the player is showing some points of hyperintensity. it was not there very definitely it was not there i'll show the mri one second the first two this is the mri of the pons if you play one player is the play no definitely it didn't see since i was not knowing that this can appearance can occur later on they asked for a second opinion from vijay vijay from the radiology of sri yatra then I, 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 we repeatedly took eeg just to find out whether it could be in cjd because this uh, geotropic gst was described in cjd there was no periodic complexes Vijay said, "Looks like extended spectrum of osmotic dissemination, likely to be hypoxia. Other DDs, viral encephalitis, like H1 and N1, which appears less likely. In any younger patient, metabolic cause like amino acid deficiency, biotin diameter is more likely to be considered. That is his view. Now, can this cortical ribbon occur in uh, osmotic dissemination? That is the next question. Usually, we describe in CJ, you know." but it is very well described as what it is this is from the literature you can see the hypertensity again it's a case from the literature in the cortical ribbon especially in the motor cortex you can find as what it is patterns so it can be easily confused with cg but here it is more often seen in the motor cortex so a history wise any Does it look like CJD now? Is still? Uh, presentation does not look like CJD now. Yeah, yeah, correct. It's not like CJD. Perfectly right. Because yes, documented hypernatremia, but not six. The recurrent vomiting followed by that. Only thing is that this kind of a finding we are not seeing. So, so called. So cortical vomiting has been described in HIE also. Yeah, it is described in HIE also. Correct. 
that's why he kept the possible hiv in this patient hepatitis hey, ischemic diabetes but look at the pons who oh, uniform that is not described in hiv hey, hepatitis ischemic diabetes all other things he can agree with basically angle in one way with but pons uniformly hepatitis uh, restriction like right? meaning a good number of the number of remarkably well this patient did not improve well because the extensive damage which is occurred to the brain sir one doubt sir sir what is your call on steroids in osmotic demyelination sir because i you know we are giving it just because we have nothing else to give that's all there's no real role for in steroid in osmotic demyelination okay sir. okay shall we go to other case or stop here one more sir okay so i have a doubt uh, regarding the previous case like uh, yes, can fasciculations being described in muscle disease sir usually fasciculations are not described in muscle disease but can occur rarely can occur Okay. Because to have fasciculation, the axon should get damaged, right? Or fibrillations can occur due to any denervation. When the muscle fibers get denervated, you can get uh, fibrillation. If there is axon damage also due to the inflammatory process. From the nephrosis injury, there is a lot of inflammatory cells in the muscle. Muscle. muscular fasciculation does sir muscular muscular fasciculation does it is bad yeah but why it is i don't it is inside that sir no sir that yes are they in class okay. yeah, there was one case right sir in that uh, the patient had diffuse fasciculation still we were suspecting fsht as a differential yeah correct Fasciculation is a good. I mean, can can be. But the patient was having diffuse fasciculations also. That's why I asked. Is yeah. it that common that can we suspect a muscle disease when you are seeing diffuse fasciculations? The one should not suspect. One should not suspect. But rarely, these are all rarities. It's not very common. Okay. Sir. But fibrillations and positive sharp words are very common. Decrease in temperature are all very common. Thank you, sir. in all myopathies fibrillations and positive sharpness all no, 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 not all myopathies like i am talking about fsht fsht only what about mm-hmm. limb girdle and other muscular dystrophies other myopathies not classically but all inflammatory myopathies necrotizing yeah, definitely is irritable myopathy is there anything if there is no inflammation in fsht it is not because of inflammation it is because of the fiber yeah. splitting no so there is lot of inflammation similarly in duchenne it has been described it has described in rimmed vacuolar myopathies there are got inflammatory cells in the muscle 
they all can produce uh, this kind of fibrillations. Primitive vascular is a congenital myopathy. Like Ronaka and things like that. Yeah. Inflammation in my inclusion body my set is also primitive vascular myopathy. Okay, shall we stop here? Said, oh, one more doubt. Pardon? One more doubt. Why is that this so, term, lower fibers is more affected in uh, of trapezius is more affected in FHC? All our muscle fibers with the same texture and same fiber type, no, sir? Okay, that question that uh, can be just asked to Dr. Sadish Kandarkar. He couldn't answer, then how can I answer? <laughs> Because there is all enigmas which we don't know. Why some other muscle fibers are affected. So I, I don't know. Then that patient with uh, myelolysis, did that patient have uh, skew along with the uh, geotropic deviation? Very difficult to look for skew because you know the problem is uh, uh, you know uh, thighs are moving like that. To find out if skew is present or not, I can say it is present, but I'm not very much convinced about the skew. In CJD, usually skew also happens. You also have so this is said to be in the tech pain, mid pain, tech TV. Okay, I will skip this case and go to a short case because this is a good long case, it should be discussed in length later on. This case, some of us have seen, but I still. This patient came with his step inability to open his eyes after closing for the last three months. This is a video of the patient. Definitely. Okay, what is it? You want to see the video once again? His complaint was the ability to open his eyes after closing for the last three months. A praxia fight it opening. Okay, a praxified opening. The first person. So, which one will you vote for? The first person. Lower eyelid is also having this. Uh, in, in actually, in before spasm, what should happen to the upper eyelid, upper eye, eyebrow? It should come down, no? If it is elevated, it is unable to open the eyelid, that frontal is overacting. This is more seen with the apraxia eyelid opening. The lower half is involved more. Pardon? The it's lower part or something. Involved. Yeah, that's the thing. So, apraxia eyelid opening is a DD4. Blepharospasm confined to the palpable part of the orbicularis ocular. The orbicularis ocular has two parts, orbital part and palpable part. If the dystonia is confined to the palpable part, this eyelid will not relax because it's contracting. But the orbicular, orbital part is normal. So it's, the patient is trying to um, um, break the contraction by elevating the uh, and, uh, eyebrow. So in that case, what to look for is, this is the, see the next video. This video is a little more clear. Look at the lower eyelid. What is happening lower eyelid? That tells you that that the price of eyelid opening, right? The price of eyelid opening is only confined to the eyelid opening. 
there is nothing should occur in the lower eyelid. So this is one important sign by which you can differentiate the praxia of eyelid opening from a blepharospasm due to the parthumbaral part of the obliterus of the Okay. Sir, in both the conditions, frontalis overactivity will be there, no, sir? Correct. Perfectly right. It will be there. Because only the purple part is overacting, no? The other part is okay. So, the pain, in an attempt to open the eyelid, the patient will overact or conduct the frontalis. So, how to prove the point? So, we did an EMG from put a needle, you can find there is a in a price of eyelid opening, you don't find any EMG or activity. Here there is continued discharge coming from the palpable part of the orbital. Very simple procedure. Put a needle in the palpable orbital circle, you find the discharges. Uh, in fact, this case was published. The movement is on the I still find the Rajit Thomas. This patient is from Pushpari. In blepharospasm, person, lower eyelid will, but that I didn't understand. Pardon? Lower eyelid. The lower eyelid, what happens in blepharospasm? person? Ah, because in the in the person, person means there is overactivity of the orbicularis ocle. The orbicularis ocle overactivity may be confined to the palpable part alone or palpable part, the orbital part both together can produce. So what happened mean if the least if the overactivity is confined to the palpable part, the palpable part orbicularis is present in the upper eyelid as well as the lower eyelid. So both will contract. Okay. In a praxia of eyelid opening, patients are unable to open the eyelid because of the failure of inhibition, disinhibition. That means when you want to open the eyelid, the, the eyelid should get disinhibited, inhibited. So sorry, the inhibition should be removed. The inhibition is not removed in apraxia of eyelid opening. So, continued remain inhibited. That is what is happening in apraxia of eyelid opening. But there is no overaction. But in blepharospasm, spasm, the eyelid remains low because of the overaction, excessive activity of the parto part of the orbicularis. Whereas in apraxia of eyelid opening, there is no overactivity of the part of the part or orbital part because the levetal part of the is not, the inhibition is not removed. Is not disinhibited. When you want, suppose when you close the eyes, okay, what will happen? The level, um, the level part of is inhibited, remaining because the orbicularis contract. Suppose when the orbicularis contract and the levator also contract, the eyelid will not, you will not be able to close the eyelid. If you want to close the eyelid, what happens when the orbicularis contract? The levator has to be inhibited. So after you have closed the eyes, you want to open the eye. The levator muscle should get the inhibition should be gone off, it should be removed, but it is not removed. So, what will happen? It will remain inhibited. So, you get so apparent doses will be there. The levator will not act because remain inhibited. The inhibition is not removed. So, that is what is happening in a practice of Am I clear to you? Yes. I think it's time now. We need to stop here. This is a long, these are all long case. Let me see the short case for you. Just five more minutes there. Only all our law cases. Sir, one just one general question, sir. Please. Sir, have you seen a case of uh, this one head drop because of statinus, sir? I, 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 head, head drop because of statinus. Only neck extends are weakness because of usage of statin, sir. No, I not seen. Okay, no. sir. Okay. No, I have seen inflammatory myopathy producing the neck drop. As well as hypothyroidism producing natural treatable condition. But uh, no, no. 
the most common is idiopathic uh, condition idiopathic neck exercise ALS can also present of course yeah. ALS polymyositis dermatomyositis various capillary movements that is the sarcomyelin these are other conditions but among the myopathy is okay sir thank you sir okay shall we stop here so next tuesday thank you sir okay. thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.